modified amino acid is that there's a formyl group, which is just a single carbon with a double bond oxygen right there, that's attached to the amino, the alpha amino group, of the first methionine being put in. Now, there are chemical reasons for why that occurs. I won't discuss them here. If you're curious, I'll come, and, uh, you come, come talk to me, and I'll tell you why that's the case. But suffice it to say that the very first methionine that goes in has this formula group that's been placed on it. OK? Makes sense? Questions on that? You might wonder, well, if I put this formula group on here, how can this be used in the middle of a protein, right? Because in the middle of a protein, we've got to connect the uh, alpha uh, amino to the next alpha carboxyl. This would block that from happening. It turns out that for ones that are going to go in the middle, the cells use ones without that formula group. So they have a way of telling the difference between the two. This one is called an initiator tRNA because it's the very first TR, the very first amino acid that's put into the protein, an initiator tRNA. So in bacteria, the initiator tRNA would be something we would call FMET, that is for formyl methionine. FMET would be the amino acid that would be on the initiator tRNA. I'll say that again. So in prokaryotes, we would, discuss, we would describe the initiator tRNA as having FMET, formyl methionine, that's what FMET stands for, attached to it. That FMET will, will become the first amino acid in the protein as it's being made. In eukaryotes, they use methionine. They don't use FMET, but they use methionine as well as the first one. Yes, sir? It's just the methionine that's altered. Why do we call it the initiator? I'm not sure I understand your question. It's called the initiator because this is the first amino acid that's put into the protein. Okay, so and so the first amino acid is always formyl methionine in prokaryotes. So eukaryotes also have an initiator tRNA? They have an initiator tRNA, but it's just methionine in eukaryotes. It's not called FMET because it doesn't have a formula group on it. Okay? All right. So uh, let's move on. Now, this gets a little hairy. And again, I'll try to keep it as simple as I can. But it is an intricate process. And it's a process that you should know something uh, about how it occurs. All right? So it turns out during translation, an incredible complex has to be assembled. The complex that has to be assembled is the ribosome itself. The ribosome contains about 70 different proteins. And the proteins are organized into what's called a small subunit and a large subunit. A small subunit and a large subunit. The small ribosomal subunit in bacteria is called the 30S. S stands for a measure of centrifugal velocity, which we don't need to worry about. But if 30S is the small subunit, the large subunit is called the 50S, meaning it's bigger. When we put the two of them together, we get the complete ribosome, which has a size of not 80S, but 70S. The, the units don't add. They're not additive. Okay? But 70S is bigger than a 50 or a 30. So in prokaryotes, we have a 30S subunit, the small subunit. We have a 50S subunit, the large subunit. They come together in a process I'm going to describe and make the large ribosome itself, which is a 70S uh, ribosome. OK, well, how does this coming together occur? Well, first thing that happens is that we see a messenger RNA that's ready to be translated. Okay, It's ready to be translated. And we have a small ribosomal subunit up here. We have an initiator tRNA over here. Okay, These guys are brought together, this whole complex of stuff, are brought together by what are called initiation factors. Initiation factors. People usually call them IFs. Right? They're called IF1, IF2, and IF3. It doesn't really matter for our purposes here which one's which. But the complex puts together the tRNA at the proper place. 
it puts together the messenger RNA and it puts together the 30S ribosome. So we have a complex between these three things right here that are made possible by the initiation factor. Or initiation factors, I should say. Now, that process takes energy. The energy for that process is GTP. It's the first time you've seen GTP as an energy source. It turns out GTP is the only energy source we use in making proteins. We don't use ATP at all. So GTP is the energy source for making proteins. We'll see it comes up several times. Well, let's think about this messenger RNA. All right? The cell is going to translate this messenger RNA. And we could imagine that, well, we could organize things so that it, say, starts at the end. But if it starts at the end and the end has been damaged, we've got a problem, right? It's not going to be starting in the right place. So it turns out that cells don't start the translation at the end of the messenger RNA. They do not start translation at the end. Well, the question then is, well, where does it start translation? Part of the answer is, it's going to start at an AUG, because that's the initiator codon, right? Everybody remember that? Which AUG does it start at? There's going to be a whole bunch of AUGs in this message. Which one does it start at? Does it start at the first one? What if I have an operon and I've got multiple genes on here? I'm going to have different AUGs for each one. Well, it turns out that in bacteria, they have a sequence that tells the initiation factors which AUG to use. The sequence that's found in the messenger RNA is called the shine delgarno sequence. This is a short sequence of about six nucleotides that forms base pairs with the ribosomal RNA in the 30S subunit. Remember the ribosomal subunit not only has proteins in it, but that, that's where the ribosomal RNAs come from. That's where they get their name. They're in the ribosome. So this guy has, has uh, the 30S subunit has a ribosomal RNA in it called 16S. The 16S ribosomal RNA is complementary, part of it, to the Shine-Delgarno sequence. So as a consequence, this messenger RNA is now lined up properly so the translation can, will soon be able to start. It's not ready to start quite yet. Everybody with me so far? No? OK. Lynette, question? OK, I'll, I'll go through it again. All right, so it is kind of complicated. All right. So, Here's our starting materials up here. We've got a ribosome, which is a 30S subunit. The 30S subunit has in it proteins, and it has ribosomal RNA. Okay. We're going to assemble all of these guys so that we have the proper AUG in the proper place in the ribosome. And to do that requires the alignment of the Shine-Delgarno sequence of the messenger RNA with a sequence in the 16S ribosomal RNA of, of the uh, 30S subunit. There's a lot of S's there. OK, so the shine garner sequence is a sequence of about six bases. Yes, S, it's, it's right there. S-H-I, oh, it's kind of small, isn't it? Shine, S-A, little, little, yeah, sorry. S-H-I-N-E dash D-A-L-G-A-R-N-O. That's the names of the people who discovered these sequences. So this sequence is found in all prokaryotic messenger RNAs. And it allows for the proper alignment of the messenger RNA on the ribosome. It's aligned when, that ha when, when, when there's base pairing between the Shine-Delgarno sequence and the ribosomal RNA. This messenger RNA now is ready to be translated and the tRNA is going to be in the right place. Everybody with me so far? No? OK. It's always the 16S, yes. So the 16S is a ribosomal RNA that's in the 30S ribosomal subunit. Yeah. So you got 16S, you got 30S. So the 16S is the ribosomal RNA. The 30S is the ribosomal subunit that includes the 16S RNA. 
We've got a 50S subunit. We're going to see there's also, in the 50S subunit, there's other ribosomal RNAs that also have S names. Questions? Yes? This is exactly what's telling the, the ribosome which AUG to start at. Because once that happens, the AUG is put right in the right place. I'm going to describe that place in a minute. But that's, that's what's happening there. OK? OK. So we've got everything on the 30S subunit. But to translate, we've got to have the 50S subunit as well. This involves additional initiation factors. And again, the numbers don't matter. We've got a total of three in this whole process. Okay. <clears throat> additional initiation factors come in and facilitate the attachment of the 50S to the 30S and make now the complete ribosome. The complete ribosome has the messenger RNA running through the middle of it. I figure it doesn't show it's in the middle, but it's actually in the middle of it. Now, the 50S subunit has a couple of ribosomal RNAs, only one of which I'm going to give a name just to avoid confusion. The 50S ribosome has a subunit in it called the 23S ribosomal RNA. Yes? It has a function, which is why I'm giving it a name. I'll, talk, I'll describe the function in a little bit. So for our purposes, the 30S contains the 16S. The 50S contains the 23S. <coughs> now, the last thing I want you to see here is that we have, at this point, an assembled ribosome. The assembled ribosome has both subunits. It has the messenger RNA running through it. It has a transfer RNA base paired with the start codon. And as a result, when we look at this, there are, we see what are called three different little chambers that are on this ribosome. The chambers are places for tRNAs. And we'll see that they're important during the elongation phase. So far, we haven't made a protein yet. All we've done is we've assembled the ribosome. That's what we call it the initiation phase. The three chambers have a name, have names. All right? Going from right to left, they're called the A, the P, and the E. A, P, E, like ape. Now, I want you to think about what's going to happen during elongation. Then I'll describe it to you. All right? During elongation, we're going to have to bring in another tRNA to pair with this next codon. And then we're going to have to join those amino acids together. And then the ribosome is going to slide a little further along. The ribosome is going to move from left to right in the translation process, because left to right is 5 prime to 3 prime. That means that incoming tRNAs are always going to come in to the A site with one exception. The one exception was that initiator when it started in the P site. Every other one is going to come into the A site. OK, I'd like to move on if, if, if there are no other questions. It's a detailed process, yes. OK. If we'll get through it, we'll do a song. OK? Here's the Shine Delgarno sequence. All right? You can see it's kind of like the promoters. It's not an exact sequence, but in general, it has a sequence something like C, C, U, C, C in the middle of it. That's generally. Uh, what is there. That is, I'm sorry, it has a GGAGG, but that corresponds in the 16S ribosomal RNA to a CCUCC. Yeah, I'm not going to make you memorize the sequences. Don't worry about that. All right? The important thing is that the Shindogarno sequence in the messenger RNA forms base pairs with a sequence in the 16S ribosomal RNA.